Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... I'm E.G. Marshall. It is written, The Lord made man in his image. It is also claimed by some that the reverse is true. As a matter of fact, it was our own Mark Twain who insisted that the Lord created Italy from the designs of Michelangelo. But in truth, each of us is a creator. Each of us makes his own little world. All of us hold the lives of others in our hands, for better, for worse, for life, for death. Listen, she talks. What do you mean she talks? She talks, she speaks, she has a voice. How? She's a doll. She's human. She's a wax doll. You made her yourself. She talks. Then let her say something. I love you, Jack. I love you. Well? Oh, it's a trick. What kind of trick? It is no trick, Joe. It is no trick. Our mystery drama, The Men with the Magic Fingers, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Mason Adams. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. I hated summer. I hated my figure. I hated buying clothes. So I didn't. I went to the Singer Smaller Figure Sale. They've got smaller prices on some great Singer sewing machines, and you get a free Smaller Figure Shape-Up plan when you buy a sale machine. I saved $100 on an incredible Futura 2 machine with the exclusive Flip and Sew two-way sewing surface for flat and in-the-round sewing. I saved my figure. I saved my summer. The Singer Smaller Figure Sale, where all the figures are reduced, including mine. Sale ends August 7th. Way back in 1876, people started enjoying two things that have gone hand in hand ever since. Major League Baseball and Beechwood Age Budweiser. And just as Abner Doubleday's invention became our national pastime, so did Adolphus Bush's brilliant golden creation become the king of beers. And together, they gave us two of the most famous phrases in the history of sports. Play ball and cold bud here. Anheuser-Busch, headquarters, St. Louis, Missouri. If you suspect your garden's been bugged, come to your True Value hardware store. They offer the most effective debugging devices available, Hudson and service sprayers. First, the Hudson cordless electric sprayer with battery charger. Just give the sprayer's battery an overnight charge. It'll spray more than 45 minutes. Next, fill the tank with insecticide or other chemicals and adjust the nozzle for the spray pattern you need. Fine, coarse, long range or undersides of leaves. And then spray. Hudson cordless electric sprayers start at just $17.88. True Value hardware stores also offer service one and a half gallon or three gallon tank sprayers with spray nozzles that adjust from coarse to fine and 12 inch extension cords for extra reach. Prices start at just $12.44. Get these effective debugging devices at participating True Value hardware stores. True Value, more than just a name, it's their way of doing business. Incredibly complex technology that sustains the world of today is scarcely a century old. For the most part, it was the creation of men who had little or no formal scientific training. They were mostly spare time tinkerers, experimenters, handy, clever jacks of all trades, a teacher who invents the telephone, a village mechanic who pioneers and perfects the motor car, two bicycle repairmen who fly the first airplane. 
In the opening years of our century, there was a man named Jack Youngblood. He owned a tawdry little carnival inside show that traveled the length and breadth of America. We're about to meet Jack at a moment when he's not really at his best. You, piety. You killed her. You killed You're her. You're crazy. Look, she's dead. How can she be dead? You, you were jealous. Jealous? Jack, how could and I now be? she's dead. I'll kill you. Jack. You'll pay for this. No. You killed her. No. No, don't hit me again. Don't. No. He's crazy. Nothing can help. No one can help. He's murdered her. All right, now, all right, all right. What's going to commotion about here? What's going on around here? What happened to this woman? You, you there. What did you do to her? What did I do to her? I guess it should be clear. I killed her. A doctor. I killed her. Get a doctor. There ain't no need for a doctor. Piety. She's dead. He killed her. We heard her scream for mercy. Yes, Piety, you're dead. But soon I'll be dead, too. What's your name, mister? The Queen. The Queen of Romany looked into my eyes. And she saw death. Your name, mister? Jack Youngblood. He's Jack Youngblood. Poor Piety. I killed him. And the name of the deceased? I said the name of the deceased. Mr. Youngblood? Piety. Piety Youngblood. She was his wife. Why did you kill your wife? Uh, can't you hear what I'm saying to you? I hear you, Sheriff. I hear you. Well, why did you kill your wife? What can I tell you? The truth? You wouldn't believe it. Pull yourself together, man. I could say to you, Sheriff, I killed her because she just murdered the princess. What princess? And I would answer the princess of Romany. And you would ask... The princess of Romany? When? And I would answer just now. And you would ask... Where? And I would say, right in here. And you would ask... Now, where's the body? And I would answer, there, on the floor, next to poor Piety. And you would say... But there ain't nothing on the floor, just a heap of clothes and some shawls and ribbons and then some dime store jewelry. So what do you want me to tell you? You wouldn't believe a word. <sighs> Mr. Youngblood, I am asking you again... Why did you kill your wife? I killed her because... Because... Why did I kill Piety? She loved me in her own way. But was it love? No, she's... Why did I do it? Maybe I better clear it up my own mind. I suddenly lost all control of myself. The papers, they'll say, man kills wife in a fit of passion. But I don't think it happens suddenly. You plan it. You don't know what you're planning, but you're doing it. You're getting yourself ready to kill. When did I start getting myself ready? When? Step up, Lou, sir. Oh, sir, here she is, Soraya. You ask for her, you beg for her, you clamor for her, and here she is, Soraya. She has danced before all the crowned heads of Europe. Soraya, see her in the forbidden love dance of ancient Egypt. A college education for one dime, ten cents. Sip this way and watch her shimmy. Move this way and watch her shake. Princess Soraya, queen of the Nile, the one and only Soraya. I knew I'd find you in here, Jack. What are you doing, for pity's sake? Don't. Well, if you're going to spend all your time in the blacksmith's wagon, why are we paying Joe Frazier? Why don't you go to bed? Jack... Look, Paddy, I'm busy. You... 
don't love me anymore. No, that isn't so. If you did love me, you'd spend more time with me. More time? Good Lord, woman. All we do is spend time together. We live in a circus wagon. We're either traveling or working or sleeping. When ain't we together? We don't sit together and talk together. Not anymore. Your piety. I have got to finish this. Now, you just run along. Jack, what am I doing wrong? Shh. You know, if you must know, I'll tell you what you're doing wrong. You are chewing gum. That's what you're doing. Here, you're supposed to be an alluring, exciting, voluptuous, Arabian slave dancer and assault in the harem, and you stand there chewing gum for Pete's sake. My mother and father disowned me when I married oh, you. Oh, let's not start that. Nobody asked what you. What do you mean, there. nobody asked me? You asked me to run away with you. You asked me to learn this... This immoral dance. You made me do it. It isn't immoral. It isn't? It isn't immoral to be half-naked and shake your body at a pack of leery-eyed degenerates? Yeah, it's immoral. It's degenerate. You know why? Because you make it immoral and degenerate. You have not got the warmth in your heart and the vision in your soul and the fire in your brain to do it like it was meant to be done. A ritualistic expression of the ancient art of love. What do you do? You stand up there and you chew gum. Don't be mad at me, Jack. Honey, I'll do anything you say. Look, when you're up there... What's going What's going through your mind? Nothing, Jack, honey, nothing. Something has to be going through your mind. Well, something is. I'm thinking I'll be glad when this is all over. That's what you think? Don't be mad at me, Jack. You asked and I told you the truth. Piety, listen, can't you start saying to yourself, this is an expression of love, this is an offering of love, a religious ritual. Oh, you're crazy. If you tried, it would all be different. There would be a different spirit in that crowd. You'd really be Princess Zorea, the queen of the Nile. Oh. Jack, don't you want to come to bed now? I have to work. On what? Yeah, what are you doing? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you when I'm finished. Why can't you tell me now? Will you get out of here and leave me alone? You never used to shout at me. Oh, gee, I'm sorry. Piety, I'm really, I'm really sorry. Go, go, now run along. Run along? Am I a little girl? <sighs> I won't be late. Hey, Jack. You gonna spend the night in my wagon? Oh, if you are, you better find me another place to sleep. Oh, I had no idea it was so late, Joe. <sighs> it must be two in the morning. Hey, what's that you're making? This? Hmm? Yeah. A new act. What kind of act? All I see there is a, this is a doll. Kind of life-size doll. Is that what you've been working on uh, all these nights? What do you think of her? Hmm? She ain't bad looking. Wait till you see her in costume. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen, and meet... Meet... I need a good name. Um... Leonora. Who's Leonora? You ask that question, friend, and what does it prove? It proves that you are from the country, deep down in the boonies. Not only do you not know that the Civil War has been over these 50 years and more, you weren't even aware that we had one. Well, sir, Leonora is the Princess Leonora, queen of the Romany nation. And what is the Romany nation? Why, the gypsies. Ask Princess Leonora. She knows all. She tells all. A fortune teller? Uh, I'll sit her behind the table, okay? And we get a room in a crowd, and he asks a question. And then I say, oh, Princess Leonora, reach into the depths of your mysterious wisdom and answer. And she answers. She answers. Sure. She talks. Sure. It can't work. No, I know you can throw your voice, Jack, but it's it's too risky. I'm not going to pull a stunt like that. She's going to talk. You know them newfangled phonograph records? Under the table, under a mystical, magical cloth, with all of them astral signs of the zodiac and whatnot, I got some small phonograph records. But, but of Jack... Of course, there's only a certain number of questions you can be asked. Are you kidding? There's a million questions. You think so? Okay, okay, you go ahead. You're the rule. Ask a question. Ask... Princess Leonora, the Romany queen. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, princess, I am keeping company with this beautiful girl. Are we going to get married? Ah, my red-haired friend. I foresee a difficult pathway ahead. But in the end, you will know true happiness. Hey. Well, there's only four or five, six maybe questions. Love, money, sickness, health, stuff like that. I got a phonograph record for all of the answers. 
But red hair. How did she know I had red hair? Well, I also got specials. Like, if a guy is short or tall or fat, if a woman is good looking... I, it, it's risky, Joe. It's risky. Wait. Wait till you see her ready to go, dressed in red and black. Black hair, red lips, red blouse, black skirt, black eyes, red cheeks. Oh, she'll take your breath away. Ask Princess Leonora, Queen of Romany. Ask! <laughs> Princess Leonora, queen of the Romani people. She sees in the dark. She sees into your heart, into your mind. Ask for 50 cents. Learn your future for 50 cents for one half a dollar. Know your fate. Ah, the gentleman in the back. Mr. Abercrombie, take his money and make him welcome. Speak, sir. Ask and it shall be revealed to you. Uh, my wife is very ill and the doctors say there's no hope. But is there hope? Is there... We await your reply, princess. My dear suffering friend, every day that dawns brings up hope and strength, and each day brings the promise of the miracle. Believe, my friend, believe, and I promise you, there is hope. Thank you, Princess Leonora, Queen of the Romany people. Thank you. And now, is there anyone else? Jack. Hmm? Jack, what are you doing? Well, you can see what I'm doing. I'm fixing her hair. Oh, boy, wasn't she absolutely sensational? All I asked Jack. was, see, none of them believed she'd work, especially Joe. Well, you saw Jack, her. you didn't spill for me tonight. Oh, I was busy. Busy? With what? A doll? Piety. Honey, this isn't a doll. This is Princess Leonora, Queen of the Romany. She's nothing of the kind. She's just a doll. Jack, if you don't spill for me, nobody comes to see me. I told Joe to spill. But he's not much good. He can't draw flies. I'm the star act of the carnival. You always said that. I'm the star oh, act. Honey, you have been the star act of the show. But all that's been changed now. Oh, has it? Has it? Well, we'll see about that. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> see about that. When used by a woman, it's the most mysterious phrase in the world. When a woman says, we'll see about that, she can have practically anything in mind, from leaving you to killing you. We'll explore this problem further when I return with Act Two in just a few moments. To the man who bought the Skyhawk, to the girl in the century, we're glad you like your Buicks, glad you set your spirit free. And to the family from Ohio, to the folks up in St. Paul, nice to see you join us, nice to see you all. There I was with my new Buick Skylark, and there he was, just coming out of the store with a new coffee table. I like your coffee table, I said. I was going to buy one just like it. Thank you, he said. I like your Buick Skylark, too. I was going to buy one just like it. Thank you, I answered. Then he suggested, listen, you like my coffee table and I like your Skylark. Why don't we get married? <laughs> what can I say? I guess it was love at first, Buick. It's nice to see you join us. We're glad it came to be. Dedicated to the free spirit in just about everyone. Is your bank open when you're busy and closed when you're not? Northwest Federal Savings knows that a good place to save is ready for you when you're ready. So Northwest Federal's open 63 hours a week. If you work evenings, you can come to Northwest Federal six full days. Working days? Northwest Federal's open Monday, Thursday, and Friday evenings. And if the only time you can get to Northwest Federal is 8 o'clock in the morning, well, that's okay, too. Because Northwest Federal has early bird service every morning from 8 o'clock. There are four convenient Northwest Federal savings locations, Irving Park, one block west of Cicero, in Des Plaines on Dempster, just east of the Tri-State, at Harlem Irving in Norwich, and at Algonquin and Golf in Arlington Heights. Come into Northwest Federal Savings on your way to, from, or between work, shopping, or home. Anytime, because Northwest Federal Savings keeps the best hours yours. It's Northwest Federal Savings time, 63 hours a week. It is 
is best, said the poet, to let sleeping dogs lie. And, of course, to hope that lying dogs will sleep. Far more dangerous than sleeping dogs are unhappy women. What to do about it? Well, it is best to prevent a woman from becoming unhappy in the first place. But how is that possible? Almost anything can make her unhappy. Here is one having a tantrum over a doll. Piety, you're being foolish. I know. Well, then, if you know why... How can I be any other way? I'm a foolish person. You know what I think? You're jealous. Yes. How can you be jealous? Jealous of a doll. I'm jealous of anything that can take you away from me. How can a doll take me away from you? She already has. You didn't spiel for me tonight. I told Joe to spiel for you. Well, Joe is no spieler, and you know it, and I know it, and the crowd knows it. Oh, but he's good enough for piety. After all, piety's no good anymore. You mustn't talk that way. Why not? Don't you think that way? Look, I'll spiel for you tomorrow night. What are you doing to her face? Oh, I'm just making it up here. Do you have to make her so pretty? Well, after all, she's appearing before the public, isn't she? But a gypsy lady isn't supposed to be pretty. But she's a gypsy princess. She is queen of the Romany. I am the only princess in this show. I'm Princess Araya. I'm queen of the Nile. Why don't you put that attitude until you're dancing? Maybe then folks would believe it. Oh, I hate you. Oh, baby, it's late. Go to bed. If I'd wanted to go to bed alone, I wouldn't have gotten yeah, married. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll be along in a little while. Oh, well, don't rush on my account. Spend the night here with your lady friend. All this time, it was running through my mind. I'm going to kill her. I didn't know it was running through, but it had to be. The killing is like a plant. Don't flower out of nowhere or nothing. First, the seed has to be planted and watered. Gradually, it sprouts, it grows. And only then does it bust out in a flower. <laughs> I looked at Princess Leonora, queen of the Romany. I'd made her with my own hands. Yeah, I was always clever with my hands. I could do anything, I could make anything. Papa wanted me to become an engineer, but he died young and there was no money for college. So I, I became a drifter. Ah, she was beautiful. Princess Leonora. Every part of her was perfect. Just perfect. 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 You, you always talk to yourself, Jack, or, or is this something new? Oh, I didn't know anyone was there. Oh, you hey. scare a fellow sometimes. Who, me? Uh, uh, Jack, do you know what you've been doing for the past ten minutes? What? Huh? You've been standing there saying, perfect, perfect. Well, finally, I figured I'd, I'd better interrupt. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. <sighs> well, it sure was a success tonight, huh? Well, you were right about that gypsy doll. Princess Leonora. She's perfect. Yeah, this is, this is what I mean. Yeah. Well, maybe I don't know what I mean. It's a sense I don't know what you mean. Uh, have you finally found her, Jack? <laughs> found who? Your perfect woman. I don't know what you're talking about, Joe. Ah, sure you do. Man, now you've been looking for a perfect dame to lift this carny into the big time. But all of them disappoint you. Now, now look, at, look at who you had the last couple of years, huh? A wire walk, a wild animal tamer, and now piety. You taught each one of them all the tricks. But you see, they all fell short. So... Now you got one that can't disappoint you. I didn't know you were crazy, Joe. No, 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 no. This one isn't human. So she don't have a heart and mind of her own to fight you back. Oh, is that bad? No. No, it's good. So what's the beef? There ain't no beef, except... What are you going to do about piety? Piety? Yeah, Jack. Piety. You remember? Now, she ain't like the others. Now, they were circus girls, you know, showgirls. They knew the score. With them, it was an act, make or break. But piety, you know, you had to marry her. All right, Joe. Well, what I'm saying is, Jack, you just can't get rid of her. What are you talking about? Whoever said I wanted to get rid of her? Well, maybe you don't realize it now, Jack. But you're getting there. I felt very bad, very guilty. Poor piety. I'd been mean. 
about not mean. It wasn't intentional, any of it. But I guess you just got to keep telling a woman you love her. Spend a lot of time with her. Otherwise, she gets all out of sorts. The next day, I tried to go out of my way with piety. And things were a lot sunnier. But, of course, there was the next night. And I was in the soup all over again. Where were you? Where was I? Where was I? I was right here in a shop wagon. Where were you when my act was supposed to begin? Oh. You promised you'd spiel for me. I know, but I had this emergency. You weren't there. When there's a wind, I have to use a special glue to get her hair to stick. Nobody paid to see my dance. We're doing great with Princess Leonora. You don't have to dance if you don't want to. I am the star of this show. Look, you said so yourself. It was immoral to stand up there half naked and shimmy and shake your body at them leery-eyed degenerates. It doesn't matter how I feel about it. It's my profession. Well, there comes a time when you're able to retire. Because... Because of that doll? This doll has a name. Princess Leonora, Queen of the Romans. I am not going to be shoved out of my job by a, a hunk of painted wax and twisted wire. Princess, you must excuse her. Piety doesn't have much experience with royalty. Oh, you make me sick. I really was too busy with my... my Leonora to pay much attention to piety. I remember reading it in school. This ancient Greek fella, Pygmalion, he made a statue, Galatea, and it came to life. Well, I wasn't about to think anything like that, but... Oh, she was beautiful, Leonora. In a way, no human woman could be beautiful. And she seemed so... So... What word am I looking for? So natural? She said, I don't know. Anyway, as I worked on her, I started talking to her. I didn't think anything of it. Princess... I think you need a new dress. Oh, no, 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 nothing I could make. I'll send to Kansas City. No, no, to Chicago. No, no, to New York. New York for the fanciest... It's very expensive in New York. Well, it doesn't matter. Do you really want to spend all that money? Yeah, but it's your money, Leonora. You're the moneymaker around here. You're the one they come to see. No, it's your genius. Jack Youngblood, leave here. Leave the carnival, the sideshow. Leave here? And go where? Do what? It's an age of such excitement. Look at what is happening all around us. Men drive horseless carriages on the ground. Men are flying horseless carriages in the sky. Men are speaking through the air. I know, I know. This is the time for the men with the magic fingers. You are one of those men, Jack Youngblood. Yes. Leave. I can't. Poor Jack. What do you mean, poor Jack? Hey, what am I doing? I'm talking to this... this and she's talking... She's talking to me. Oh, no. She talks. She talks. Of course she talks, Jack. You showed me how it's done. You got those phonographs. Oh, no. What do you mean, no? She talks. Oh, but how can she talk? We were talking just before. Now, listen. Oh, listen to this. Leonora, say hello. Say hello to Joe here. Leonora, tell Joe what you said when I told you that I'd sent to New York for a dress. You said, you said it's very expensive in New York. You said that. Leonora. Well, Jack? Hmm? She spoke to me less than five minutes ago. She said this is the time for the men with the magic fingers. You said that, Leonora. You said it. Sure. I don't use words like that. Where would I get it from? Where? All, all right, Jack. If you say... Get out of here. Get out. Sure, Jack. Okay, sure. Leonora. Leonora. Yes, Jack? There. See? There, you're talking. Why did you talk just before? Why did you speak to Joe? Why should I speak to Joe? He doesn't love me. Well, we ain't doing badly. Uh, taking one thing with another. Thanks to Princess Leonora, but we should save money where we can. <laughs> Show me where. Piety, do we need four musicians for her act? Well... All she needs is two, a drummer and a flute player. Uh, you want to tell her we're cutting her little orchestra in half? What's huh? your job? Uh, she's your wife. All right, I'll tell her. Why don't you tell her now? Now? Yeah, yeah, here she comes. She's looking for you. 
She's always looking for me. Yeah, well, I'll leave you two lovebirds alone. Jack, I have to talk to hey, you. Excuse me. Jack. All right, all right, Piety. What is it? Is that how you speak to me now? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm busy. Maybe you're busy, but you're not sorry. What do you want? What do I want? <laughs> I want you to treat me like a husband should. Oh, really? Well, I know husbands who get drunk and beat their wives. At least they pay attention to them. Look, Piety, I am very tired. Then why don't you come to bed at night? I have to make sure of the platform for the high wire act. Well, at least you're not going off to do something for her. Oh, Piety. All right, I'll tell you what I want. I need some new costumes. Costumes? Yes. I want to send to New York for some new dresses. But we can't afford to. Well, you sent to New York for costumes for her. For her? You can spend a fortune on a dress for a wax dummy. You can't afford five cents for a flesh and blood woman who also happens to be your wife. All right, that's enough. Jack, please don't be mad at me. Who have I got in the whole world but you? Don't start that. Act like a grown-up, sensible woman. Yes, Jack. Now, we have to make some money around here. I know, I understand, Jack. You don't need four musicians. All right, you're right. What? What do you mean, I don't need... The music should be small, special. Now, just a minute. The object is to inflame the imagination. I can't have a new costume. Now I can't even have music. And next I won't even have an act. Is that what you're trying to do? Is it? Why do you think people come here to look at your wax dummy? I don't want to argue about they it. They come here to look at flesh. Sensual, alluring, female flesh. That's what you said to me. Those were the words you used. Hi, Eddie, when you get this way, there's no point in talking. You're right. Indeed, Jack Youngblood, there is no point in talking at all. Something should have warned me. Something in her face, her voice, something. But nothing did. Everything about her should have warned me. But I didn't notice. And so I went off to work with my high wire artist, and she. Well, where she went, I didn't find out until it was too late. Step closer. Here she is, as advertised, the one, the only, the magnificent Princess Leonora, queen of all the gypsies. She looks into your heart. She looks into your mind, your soul. For 50 cents, ladies and gentlemen, she will forecast your future. Who will be the first? Mister? Uh, the ladies on the left, Mr. Abercrombie, accept her gift for the Princess Leonora. We thank you kindly, ma'am. And how may the princess enlighten you? I've been a widow 20 years. And now a fellow has proposed. And I want to know... I want to know You if... want to know if it's you he's after or your money. That's what I want to know. And you shall know. Speak. Speak to this dear, kind, troubled lady, Princess Leonora. Speak. Speak. My foot had eased over to the right button under the table. The button that would release the record that held the answer. And I pushed down on the button. And I kept pushing. But nothing happened. The princess remained silent. And then I sneaked a glance at the bottom of the table. I saw the broken wires someone had deliberately. And I looked out at the crowd. And I saw her in the back. Piety. And there was a grin on her face. My eyes sought out her eyes and they met. And she wiped that grin off in a hurry, but not quite fast enough. I knew and she knew I knew. But none of that was helping me now because I had trouble. I had real trouble. My act was falling apart and the crowd sensed it. At first it was funny. What's the matter, Princess? The cat got your tongue. Why didn't she answer me? The crowd was beginning to feel the act was a swindle. That they were being taken. They began to get ugly. And it got contagious. And that's when, that's when anything can happen. It certainly does not look happy or promising for the Jack Youngblood Carnival this evening. Given the situation and the temper of the crowd, Jack should be in for a rough and rocky session. However, there is such a thing as rising to an occasion. If Jack knows how to do it, this is surely the time and the place, and the third act will be here before you know it.
You say you care enough to only want the king of beers. But you say bye, Pfizer. You've said it all. Anheuser Busch, headquarters, St. Louis, Missouri. I've got bronchial asthma. I've also got a newspaper to get out. That's why I take Bronchade tablets. They help keep my occasional asthma attacks away for hours. I tried Primatine tablets and they work. But then I heard about Bronchade. Bronchade has an extra ingredient to help you get rid of congestion. Primatine doesn't have that. Bronchade works for hours, so I can work for hours. Bronchade tablets do more to let you breathe easier. Use only as directed. People are very friendly at the hotel, and if you have any business downtown, it's the prime location. When Ken Monka, meetings and conventions manager for Bell & Howell, goes to Atlanta, he stays at the Hyatt Regency in Peachtree Center. One of the touches he likes is the hotel's get-everything-done-for-you person, sort of a European concierge who tends to all those bothersome yet necessary details Ken doesn't have time for. I loved it, and the main reason for it is that I don't like going back up to my room, making reservations for a restaurant restaurant or renting a car or check on my plane reservations, you know, like this. I turn it over to somebody and say, here, do it for me. Great. At the Hyatt Regency Atlanta, we're looking forward for Ken Monka. We'd like to look forward for you. It's the personal touch that the hotel gives, and that's what I like. For reservations at the Hyatt Regency Atlanta, call toll-free 800-228-9000 or your travel agent. I would definitely recommend the Hyatt Regency Atlanta to anyone that's going down there. It is definitely a fantastic place. This is WBBM Chicago. They were the rough and ready days for carnivals and sideshows when the century was still new and fresh. People still had a sense of wonder. They would believe anything. Well, uh, almost anything. If you told it convincingly enough. But the one thing you couldn't do was let them down. Be unable to deliver the merchandise as promised. Retribution was sure to be swift and devastating. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, pardon the delay. I can explain everything. What I had to do in the twinkling of an eye was to figure out something that would convince everyone that I shouldn't be tarred and feathered, or even lynched. And the trouble was, nothing occurred to me. Nothing. I tried to open my mouth to say something, but nothing came out. And I was in even more trouble, because the crowd was beginning to sense it. I could feel the explosion coming, when suddenly, suddenly, there was a voice. It was her voice. My dear troubled friend, I know the agony of your soul, and yet the answer is in your own heart. I can say yes or no. I can say it is you he loves, or your money he desires. But you know that already. You know what you see in his eyes, what you hear in his voice. And so, my dear, be unafraid. Do what your heart commands. Have I helped you? Have I? Oh, yes, princess, yes. Oh, oh yes. My yes. good friends, kind people you have seen, you have heard. And now, ask, seek, hear the word for yourself, your very own self. Princess, princess. I never seen the like of it, Jack, never. I've been in this griff, man and boy, 50 years. I, I never, I never seen anything to tie it. <laughs> you did it, Jack. Oh, no, she did it. Yeah, sure, sure, that's for the rubes. Between I us... I tell you, Joe, she did it. Leonora, you fixed the machinery. Now, how you were able to fix the machinery up there, out there in plain view? Jack, how did you do it? I didn't do it. Look, can't you see the wires? They're still disconnected. Ah, maybe she don't need wires. Maybe it's this newfangled wireless thing. You know, they, they got it on ships. They send messages through the air. Listen, now you listen to me. Huh? 
You heard what she said. You know every one of the phonograph records I got hooked up. What she said isn't on a single one of them. It come out of her mouth. Ah, it come out of your mouth, Jack. You had that ace in the hole all the time. What ace in the hole? Oh, oh, oh. ventriloquism. I haven't thrown my voice in 20 years. I wouldn't even know how anymore. <laughs> yeah, but you remembered in a hurry. Oh, Jack, it was the greatest performance I ever saw. Leonora, Leonora, talk to him. Tell him, tell him it was you. Oh, come on, Jack. Okay, she only talks when she wants to. Nah, Jack, look, look, uh, we gotta talk about something else now. Piety. What about piety? She can confess everything to me, Jack. She, she cut the wires. She's very stupid. She's very much in love with you. Now, would you forgive her? Forgive her? For what? She made this into the greatest act of all time. Because of what she did, I don't need the phonograph records. Leonora can speak for herself. When when you talk this way, it scares me. Why can't you believe what you saw with your own eyes, you heard with your own ears? But you do forgive Pius. Yes, I forgive her. Okay, then tell her so. She's outside. Piety, come on in. Come on in. Jack, I'm sorry, I... I don't know what got into me. I'm sorry. It's all right. I was stupid. It's all right. I could have destroyed us all. Look, I said it's all right. It's all right. Sure. What do you mean it's all right? How can it be all right? I acted crazy. It was dangerous. We could have been torn down or burned out. People could have been hurt or killed. You say it's all right? Now stop it. Stop it, Pie. It's, it's enough. Too much. You just don't care anything about me. Nothing at all. I'm Mrs. Nobody. I do good, it doesn't mean a thing. I do bad, it rolls off your back. I just don't even exist. It's all that painted heart. Piety. That Jezebel. That's who you're in love with. Would you get out of Jack, here? Jack, but don't send me away. Don't send no, me away, I'm not Jack. sending you away. I just want to have some peace and quiet. Every night it got better. More people started coming because the word was out. And now we were making money. For the first time in my life, I knew what it was to have a roll of bills in my pocket. And it was a new show. It was no longer a seedy little down-at-the-heels carny. It was fresh and bright. And we were getting new acts, big acts. But the heart of it all was... Princess Leonora, let her probe the secrets of your innermost heart. Know your future, learn your fate. Ask her, ask the Princess Leonora. My dear friend, learn to trust, and you will be trusted. Dare, my friend, dare to live, dare to love. There is no victory without risk. And only I knew how it was done. Only I knew that it was not a trick with phonograph records. Only I knew it was the princess herself who spoke. Because no one would believe me. How could they? Why should they? Her advice was given to all who came. And later at night in the shop wagon, there were moments when she would speak to me. Jack, you must leave here. Yeah, I think it's time the show moved on. Not the show, you. Leave the show. Go fulfill your destiny. My destiny? Become somebody. But I'm not doing bad. I got money in the bank. Me, can you tie that me with money in the bank? Jack, why are you satisfied with so little? Oh, oh that's a lot. You know the names on people's lips. Bell, Marconi, Edison, Ford, the Wright brothers. They have changed the world. Yeah, that's an idea. Instead of having our wagons pulled by horses, I'm thinking... You don't belong here. You belong with them. You're one of them. One of the men with the magic fingers. Why do you throw your life away on a... a two-bit carnival? Because... Well, is this really what you want? Is this the life for the rest of your days? Oh, Jack, you've got so much ability. Well, will you come with me? I, I'll always be with you. It's crazy. I know it's crazy. But I love you. It isn't crazy. That's why you made me. I'm perfect. 
I love you, Leonore. Then leave. We must leave. But how can I? If we stay here, I see death. Death? Whose death? Yours. Mine. Hers. You know that, don't you? You know that. Yes. Then we must leave. I'll, I'll think about it. You've thought about it all your life. Break away. Become free. That's why you made me, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Let's leave. Tonight. Tonight? Why not? Why wait any longer? But I... I... Look into my eyes, Jack. And see the truth. I'm the Princess Leonora. Queen of the Romanies. Look. I looked. And I saw she was no longer a wax statue. She was a woman. It had happened. Like the ancient Pygmalion, I had created a statue that had come to life. She would do what was beyond the power of every other woman I had ever known. She would give me the courage to go into the world and fight for recognition among my peers, among the men with the magic fingers. I was one of them. Yes, I was the greatest of them all. I was going into the world to take my place, not at the table of the great, but at the head of that table. Where are you going? Piety. Uh, you think you could sneak away, you and your rag doll? I'm leaving the carnival. You're leaving me? Yes, Piety, I'm leaving you. But you can't leave me. I'm your wife, to have and to hold till death to us part. I don't, I don't, I don't love you anymore. Oh, I don't say that. You never say that. All those things you told me. People change. But the marriage vow is sacred. That's how I was raised. Were you also raised to dance half naked before I... Oh, oh I'm sorry, I... I didn't mean to slap you. It's just that you drive me crazy. Why do you have to go? You're leaving me alone in the world with nothing. I, I, I'll starve. I'm not that. leaving you alone. I'm leaving you the circus. It's yours. Joe Fraser will run it for you. He's a good man. Now, for Pete's sake, accept it gracefully. You're possessed. That's what it is. Possessed by evil. It's changed you from a kind, happy, loving husband into a devil. And she did it. That gypsy doll. Look at her. Painted, smirking harlot. Adulteress. You be quiet. She must be punished. What was the punishment for adultery in the Bible? Oh, piety, please. The Let's adulteress. Part peacefully. The adulteress is stoned to death. Stoned. Piety, put down that. Adulteress. Jezebel. Oh, oh, piety, stop oh, that. Look at her. Oh, oh, look piety, you're killing her. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You're piety. crazy. Piety. Look, she's dead. How can she be dead? She was never alive. You're jealous. You're jealous. You killed her. And now I'm going to kill you. That's how she died, Sheriff. That's why Piety died. She killed my Leonora. My Princess Leonora. My princess. Uh, Mr. Youngblood, uh, you must listen to what I am saying. Why did you kill your wife? Why? Tell me. Sheriff, if I told you, would you ever believe it? Would you? <laughs> No, he wouldn't believe it. As a matter of fact, Jack's lawyer was finally able to convince him to tell the story to a jury. They didn't believe it either. Well, did you? Anyhow, you'd better believe I shall return in just a few minutes. Not all batteries are created equal. Some last a lot longer than others, like the unequaled EverReady Alkaline Power Cell batteries from your nearby True Value hardware store. Hi, Pat Summerall here with the details. They're unequal because they use a chemical system that's entirely different from that of regular batteries. The extra power they provide makes them ideal for portable radios and tape recorders. In fact, any device you use frequently or for long periods of time. And they'll hold their power for months when they're not in use. So they're perfect for devices you use only intermittently, such as calculators and cameras. True Value hardware stores offer EverReady Alkaline Power Cell batteries in popular C, D, and AA sizes, so you'll get power you can depend on with the battery that was created more equal than others. 
Ever-Ready Alkaline Power Cell batteries are just one of the values you'll find at the participating True Value hardware store near your home. True Value. Remember, more than just a name, it's their way of doing business. Just tell them Pat Summerall sent you. Oh, pull the pee, Bill, soda. Shaving cream or a prescription? It's my hemorrhoids, Mr. Edwards. Pain, itching. Well, most of my customers use this. Preparation H? Oh, in many cases, Preparation H relieves occasional pain and itch for hours. Yeah, that's great. And Preparation H actually helps shrink swelling of hemorrhoidal tissues caused by inflammation. I'll buy that. Doctor-tested Preparation H comes in ointment or suppositories. Soothes pain and itch and actually helps shrink swelling of hemorrhoidal tissue. Now use only as directed. This is Michael Learned. I'm going to ask you for money for RIF. Reading is fundamental. RIF is a national nonprofit program with more than 400 local projects that help kids help themselves to read by giving them the incentive and the books. Many of these children are in inner cities, in Appalachia, on reservations, places where they may never learn to read. But to keep going and keep helping, RIF needs your help. Please send a tax-deductible donation to RIF, Box 23444, Washington, D.C., 20024. It was an era of magic. Overnight, we left the horse and buggy and stepped into the motor car, the airplane. Our world was transformed, and it was done for us by men with magic in their fingers. At that time, in that place, it seemed there was absolutely no limit to human ingenuity. Why, one fellow even made a doll that became a human being. Or did he? Our cast included Mason Adams, Marion Seldes, Catherine Byers, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. has won around in keeping a House subcommittee from getting government wiretap records from AT&T. I'm David Jackson reporting on the CBS radio network. A district court in Washington Thursday issued a restraining order to prevent AT&T from complying with the subcommittee subpoena for those wiretap documents. CIA Director George Bush says disclosure of those documents would compromise U.S. intelligence sources and methods of greatest sensitivity. Under subpoena are FBI requests since 1969 for AT&T to set up wiretaps wanted by the CIA. The administration had failed to win compromise over the issue with subcommittee chairman John Moss of California. A hearing on the case is set for next Wednesday. More news after this. That $4 billion public works jobs bill is now law. Following the Senate's lead, the House Thursday overrode President Ford's veto. In other action on the Hill, the Senate failed to override the veto of a $3 billion military construction bill. Supreme Court Justice Lewis Powell Thursday ordered three states, Georgia, Texas, and Florida, to delay carrying out death sentences. On July 2nd, the full court upheld the constitutionality of the death penalty. Now there's a request for it to reconsider that decision, and Powell says the three states must wait for final decision. The court won't be back in session until September. There's trouble on Mars. That scoop on the Viking 1 probe that's supposed to dig up the Martian surface is jammed. In tests Thursday, the arm extended on command, but it didn't retract all the way. Project manager, manager James Martin says they're working on a backup system to help get the machine working. We must use this piece of machinery to dig soil from the Martian surface in order to put it into the biology experiment and the organic uh, experiment and the inorganic experiment. So it's a, a very critical piece of uh, hardware 
but we have redundancy in all the electronic areas. So uh, if it's an electronics failure, which I believe is the most likely, uh, we do have redundancy. The scoop is supposed to start digging next week. In response to a statement by Ronald Reagan that Ford workers are using heavy-handed tactics to win support from uncommitted GOP convention delegates, the White House released a presidential memo dated Monday saying no consideration, favor, or reward should be offered any delegate in return for his vote. The two candidates are in a tight race for the nomination. The key is held possibly by uncommitted delegates. Representative William Armstrong of Colorado is his state's only uncommitted delegate going to the convention. As such, he's getting a lot of attention from both camps. He says the competition between the two is good for the party. I'm hopeful, uh, based on the signs that I'm seeing in Colorado and some other parts of the country, that uh, this interest and the enthusiasm that's been engendered, and uh, for that matter, the, the trial runs that the campaigns have had, uh, will give us uh, a source of strength in the general election campaign. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I regard uh, unifying the party as uh, a very important objective. Former First Lady Pat Nixon will be released from the hospital in California Friday. She had a stroke two weeks ago. Doctors say now she's recovered enough to go home and continue therapy there. Now, this message. The Food and Drug Administration thinks some common tranquilizers may cause birth defects if taken by women during the first months of pregnancy. Two of the most common drugs on the list are Librium and Valium. The FDA wants manufacturers to put warnings on drug labels. Three Canadian freighters in the Arctic Sea are threatened by heavy icing. The Canadian Coast Guard has asked for U.S. help. A U.S. Coast Guard ship has been alerted, but says it will take three days to reach the area. David Jackson, CBS News. We're those news people. CBS Radio for the Midwest. News Radio 78. WBBM, Chicago. Good evening, everyone. This is Alan Bickley on News Radio 78. 